And now let's go on to question three. We say a ball is dropped from a height of 20 meters and rebounds with a velocity of three quarter of the velocity with which it hits the ground. The ball bounces two times as shown in the position versus time graph below. Right, so we can see that uh, actually the displacement or rather the position of the ball when it was dropped uh, must have been 20 meters above the ground, right? So they say to us the effects of air resistance and the time lapse with the ground are neglected, right? Firstly, they say define the term free fall. And if I may advise, ladies and gents, please just get to know your definitions, please, 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 right? Otherwise, uh, you know, it, it you get to lose free marks, okay? So they say uh, define the term free fall. We know that this is um, the movement of an object uh, under the um, the influence, rather. Why am I forgetting that word, right? Uh, the influence of gravitational uh, force only, right? So they say state the acceleration of the ball at the instant it reaches the maximum height after the first bounce, right? Now, remember, acceleration at any given point, except when it touches the ground, the acceleration is actually... 9.8 meters per second squared and it's always going to be downwards okay right so that's the acceleration so even at maximum height you know the velocity would be zero but remember that it's still accelerating at 9.8 even at that point now the next question says calculate the time interval between the first and the second bounce right by using the equations of motion right now we want to find out how long will it take to move from a up, up until b but what we need to find out in this case is with what speed will it actually uh, be uh, or release from a or will it actually bounce back from a right but to do that, we need to find out what is the velocity. Remember, they told us that it is three quarters of the velocity with which it's, it hits the ground, right? So let's find out. So between, let's say from the top, okay? So I'm going to take information from the top till the ground. So I know... In this case, I'm looking for the velocity when it gets there. I have got the position, that's 20 meters. And by the way, I just want you to note this. I am actually going to take upwards as positive, right? The reason for that, I can see that. Um, and by the way, there's nothing to take downwards. There's nothing wrong uh, taking downwards as positive, right uh, in this case our graph is suggesting that we are taking upwards as positive and if you don't understand this please just uh, go to my full video right on vertical projectile motion and you'll understand why right so which means my initial velocity they said to me it is dropped so we've got an initial velocity of zero we know that the position is actually 20 meters and we want the final velocity right and given the acceleration right so i'm going to say vf squared that's vi squared plus two times g delta y so our final velocity is what we are looking for our initial is zero plus two times positive 9.8 and the displacement there i want you to note ladies and gents right so it is 20 meters now remember we said upwards is positive so in actual fact this needs to be negative right our gravitational acceleration needs to be negative and the ball was actually uh, displaced downwards as well so that means it will be displaced in the negative direction now nothing wrong guys if you chose to take upwards i mean downwards as positive so in this case our final velocity will be the square root of all of that so square root of 
uh, 2 times 9.8 times 20 and I get a velocity of 19.79 well let's say 19.8 isn't it meters per second now of course it was going down so that should be negative okay right because I've chosen up as positive however now I want the velocity with which it bounced back, right? And they said to me, it is three quarters. So the velocity of bouncing would be three quarters of the velocity that it landed on the ground with. So that's three quarters of 19.8. Right, so this is going to give us, let's multiply that whole thing by 3 over 4. Right, so that's going to be 14.89, uh, um, 85 rather, meters per second. Right, now ladies and gents, what I'm going to do now is I found the velocity that it um that with which it bounces right so i'm going to use that velocity to find out how long it takes now remember this is a typical time symmetry question okay there's two ways in which we could do it we can take the initial velocity now remember at a uh, it left the ground at 14.85 but what this means is that it will come back to the same point, that is the ground, at the same speed, 14.85. However, remember, because we've chosen up as positive, that means it's positive going up, it will be negative coming down. Okay, so let's do this, ladies and gents. Okay, I want the time. I know gravitational acceleration, so I'm going to say once again, Vf squared, that's Vi squared. In fact, let's take this one. Vf would be Vi plus G delta T. So that's going to be minus 14.85. That's 14.85 plus 9.8. Right, so remember that would be negative 9.8 times the time that it takes between A and B. Right, so if I take this, that would be minus, um, let's say negative 14.85 minus another 14.85, right? And we are going to divide this by negative... 9.8 and we get a value delta t that's 3.03 .03 seconds okay right another way that you could have done it you could have looked at uh, from a till maximum height you know the velocity is zero there you can find the time from a till maximum height and you know that it will be the same time from the maximum height till b so you find out that time from a to maximum height and you multiply it by two please uh, ch just try to do that one and let's see what you get for that question all right so i get 3.03 .03 seconds right that's the time that we got 3.03 .03 seconds right and then finally they say sketch a velocity versus time graph for the motion of the ball from the instant it was dropped okay until it reaches a maximum height after the first bounce okay clearly indicate the values uh, of the following on the graph uh, the time a and p okay let's do this let's start by first drawing our cartesian plane so this is velocity please don't forget ladies and gents you must always label your graph this is velocity in meters per second. This is time in seconds. Okay, 
Right, so we started with a velocity of zero. We know that for sure it was dropped from that point, right? But you remember we got a velocity when we got to A and we found that velocity to be 19.8. But remember, in our case, we chose up as positive, so which means that our velocity increased but in the negative direction, right? So here's what our graph would look like. Please remember that velocity time graph is a straight line graph. So this is going to be minus 19.8, okay? And so what happens? Then it gets to the ground, it changes direction very quickly from minus 19.8 to 14.85, positive all right now the time that it took to get to the ground actually we didn't calculate that okay um, then we got in this case uh, they said until it reaches Okay, until it reaches the, maxi the maximum height after the first bounce. Okay, so this is where it reaches the maximum height. It will decrease as it goes up in the positive direction, right, up until it reaches maximum height. So we got the times for A... All right, so the time for A and P. Now remember, okay, so A is when it reached the ground. P is for when it actually um, reached its maximum height. Now, I'm not too sure when they say calculate... Uh, indicate the values uh, of the following, the times A and P. Remember, we didn't calculate the time that it takes until A, right? But we did get the time that it takes from A till B. Okay, so that means it will be half of that. Okay, A is when it reaches the ground. This would be A. Uh, this is point P. So the time there, the time difference between the two would be half of 3.03, .03, which is going to be 1.5 seconds. All right, so I'm just going to indicate it like that. Okay, the velocity with which it bounces, there it is. Okay, even when it reached the ground. So that is what your velocity versus time looks like. All right, ladies and gents, we're going to move on to question four.